killing time. Ever wondered about the hidden secrets of old Hollywood? Well, today we've got a juicy topic for you. We're exploring the scandalous world of old Hollywood celebrities with secret mafia connections. I've never seen a Rothschild before. Number 15. Jean Harlow A woman who captured the essence of a gangster's mall like no other. It was the brash, saucy Jean Harlow, known for her signature platinum blonde looks, entangled with the infamous mobster Abner Longies Wilman. Back in 1930, Harlow was a rising starlet looking for her big break. She had just signed a two-picture deal with Columbia Pictures thanks to a hefty $500,000 loan from none other than mob mogul Abner Zwillman. At that time, she was a 19-year-old divorcee who had mostly played minor roles. She could never have imagined how this association would impact her career. Harlow's journey into the world of organized crime didn't end with the loan. In fact, it was just the beginning. She went on to star in several films for Columbia and MGM during the early 1930s, catapulting her to fame. What's intriguing is that many of these films cast her as a gangster's girlfriend, solidifying the image of a flashy, brazen, and hard-edged mall, a stereotype that would persist in Hollywood for decades to come. One notable film from this era was Public Enemy in 1931, where Harlow played the quintessential gangster's girlfriend. Her portrayal helped create the enduring archetype that moviegoers associated with gangster malls. But Harlow's love life was just as tumultuous as her on-screen roles. After her relationship with Wilman, often referred to as the Al Capone of New Jersey, she ventured into marriage territory. In 1932, she tied the knot with producer Paul Byrne. However, their union took a tragic turn when Byrne took his own life a mere two months after their wedding. Number 14. Tony Bennett, the legendary crooner known for his golden voice. Just like his fellow singers from the same era, Bennett couldn't entirely steer clear of organized crime during his professional singing career. You see, in those days, many of the clubs where Bennett performed had connections to the mob. The organized crime syndicate had its fingers deeply embedded in the music industry, leaving artists like Bennett with few alternatives. According to Jazz Times, Bennett openly acknowledged his proximity to the world of organized crime. Intriguingly, Bennett's biographer, David Ivanier, spilled the beans on how the crooner's career allegedly kicked off with a little help from mob money. He went on to assert that Bennett was an associate of organized crime for quite some time. But the real twist in the story comes when we fast forward to the late 1970s and early 1980s, which were dark times for Bennett. He had spiraled into heavy drug use and was grappling with severe depression. Here's what happens. Bennett, in the middle of his problems, becomes involved with a woman who happens to be associated with the criminal underworld. But this is no ordinary woman. She's the girlfriend of none other than Anthony Spilotro. For those who don't know, Spilotro served as the inspiration for the infamous violent mobster character portrayed by Joe Pesci in Martin Scorsese's 1995 movie, Casino. Things took a shocking turn when Spill Otro found out about the affair. His reaction? He confronted Bennett and used the phone book as an instrument of punishment. The blow was hard enough to render the crooner unconscious, but in a bizarre twist of fate, it might have been the wake-up call Bennett needed. Following this rather painful encounter, Tony Bennett had an epiphany. He realized it was time to turn his life around, and he promptly checked himself into rehab. Number 13. Liza Minnelli. In 1972, Minnelli portrayed Sally Bowles, an adventurous soul in the classic film Cabaret. Little did we know that in real life, she too was willing to embrace life's adventures, even if that meant rubbing shoulders with a mobster. Enter Gianni Russo, a man with connections to the infamous mob boss Frank Costello. According to the New York Post, Russo was not your average associate of organized crime. He had a knack for getting up close and personal with some of Hollywood's biggest stars. Picture this. Russo once found himself taking cover while Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll himself, engaged in some on-screen pistol play using real guns. That's a front row seat to a real-life Hollywood action sequence. But that's just the beginning of Russo's extraordinary life. He also had a rather peculiar date with none other than Zsa Zsa Gabor. You can only imagine what kind of tales that rendezvous would yield. And then there's the story involving Frank Sinatra, where Russo claims Sinatra attempted to slap him. 
In a fearless and no-nonsense response, Russo grabbed Sinatra's skinny wrist and delivered a line that could rival any movie script. I'll rip off your arm and shove it up your ass. Now that's one way to handle an encounter with old blue eyes. To say that Gianni Russo's life was a mix of a Scorsese film, the spirit of Manifest Destiny, and the allure of a skin flick wouldn't be an understatement. And it seems that Liza Minnelli had her own chapter in this cinematic tale. According to Russo, they enjoyed certain escapades together, including some memorable threesomes, all thanks to their mutual admiration for a Vegas showgirl. As the saying goes, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But when it involves the magnetic Liza Minnelli and the enigmatic Gianni Russo. Number 12, Wayne Newton. Wayne Newton, known for his velvet voice and timeless hit Donka Shane, found himself in an unusual tangle with the underworld. In a surprising twist, Newton openly admitted to crossing paths with Guido Pinosi, a reputed member of the notorious New York criminal family, Carlo Gambino. Now, here's where things get interesting. Newton insisted that he had no inkling about Pinosi's alleged mafia ties. To him, it was all a puzzling situation. As he candidly put it, what do I know about the mafia? It was a question that loomed large in his life. In 1980, reports started circulating, accusing Newton of more than just a chance meeting. Some suggested that his co-ownership of the Aladdin Hotel, which would later transform into the famous Planet Hollywood, positioned him as the leader of the mob. And if that wasn't enough, rumors swirled that Newton might have been spilling the beans about the Mafia to law enforcement officials. Newton was adamant about his innocence, maintaining that he had no knowledge of any wrongdoing. But here's where the danger lay. The mobsters didn't know that he was as clueless as he claimed to be. The situation took a darker turn when Newton found himself included as a government witness in the trial of the reputed mobsters Guido Pinosi and Frank Piccolo. This, in turn, led to a chilling mafia death threat hanging over his head. The threat was so serious that authorities provided Newton with a bulletproof jacket to shield him from harm. Imagine the fear and uncertainty he must have felt as he confided in his wife during those tense times, I'm a dead man. Fortunately, Newton managed to navigate the perilous waters and emerged unscathed. However, one can only imagine the impact this ordeal had on his perception of any connections he may have inadvertently formed with organized crime. Number 11. Jane Mansfield When you think of mobsters, images of dark alleys and clandestine meetings might come to mind. But what if I told you that some of the most iconic Hollywood starlets of the 1950s and 60s found themselves romantically entangled with these underworld figures? Jane Mansfield, the curvaceous bombshell known for her hourglass figure and sultry presence, was one such actress. It was Sonny Francesi, the underboss of the Colombo crime family, who weaved his way into the lives of these silver screen sirens. Francesi was a regular at legendary nightclubs like the Copacabana, where the glitterati of the era gathered. It was here that he crossed paths with some of the most famous actresses of the time, including Marilyn Monroe and Diane Carroll but it was Jane Mansfield who left an indelible mark on his memory. Their fateful encounter occurred one unforgettable night at the Latin Quarter nightclub. Franzese must have been taken aback as he gazed up at the stage, only to find the voluptuous blonde icon, Jane Mansfield, unexpectedly gracing it. She was a vision, a Hollywood legend in the flesh. However, there was a twist in this tale of romance and intrigue. At the time, Jane Mansfield was married to the renowned bodybuilder and actor Mickey Hargate. When she informed Francesi that her husband would be picking her up that night, the mobster didn't mince words. He issued a threat, warning Hargate that if he dared set foot in the club, he'd be met with fists. But here's the intriguing part. The relationship between Jane Mansfield and Sonny Francesi wasn't a love story for the ages. For Francesi, a man busy playing the field, it was more of a passing fling a momentary dalliance in the whirlwind world of the Mafia. Number 10. June Lang Hollywood has always been a place where dreams come true, but for June Lang, it was also where she found herself entangled with a mobster. June, a rising star in the film industry during the 1930s, may not have reached the heights of fame as some of her contemporaries, but she had a successful career with movies like Footlight Serenade and Stage Door Canteen. Enter Johnny Rosselli a man who didn't just date beautiful actresses, he married one. 
1939, he took June Lang as his wife. With her lovely blonde hair and gorgeous blue eyes, June was a vision of Hollywood beauty. At the time of their marriage, she was making her mark in the world of musicals, movies that would soon become classics. Roselli, often referred to as Handsome Johnny, was not just a mobster. When he wasn't busy in Hollywood and Las Vegas representing the Chicago mob, he dabbled in film production, even co-producing a few movies. What makes June Lang's story all the more intriguing is that she claimed to be entirely unaware of her husband's mob connections during their marriage. Now, that might sound improbable on the surface. How could someone not know their spouse's primary line of work, especially when it involves organized crime? However, it's essential to remember that Rosselli's ties to the criminal underworld were not widely known in Hollywood at the time. Moreover, he possessed a unique talent for becoming whatever anyone wanted him to be, making it even easier for him to keep his true profession concealed. It was only when Lang stumbled upon the shocking revelation of Roselli's criminal activities that she decided to part ways with him. The discovery shattered the illusion of her fairy tale marriage, leading to their divorce in 1943. Number 9. George Raft George Raft was one of Hollywood's biggest names. However, his career could have reached even greater heights if he had made different choices. He was known for turning down roles that later catapulted other actors to stardom. Yet, it was one of his earliest roles that made him a star in the first place, playing Ronaldo in the 1932 classic Scarface. Raft's portrayal of a coin-flipping mobster in Scarface was so compelling that it had a surprising consequence. Real-life mobsters were inspired by his style and mannerisms. As Kevin Starr notes in the book Embattled Dreams, this fictional portrayal led actual mobsters to replicate Raff's on-screen persona. But George Raff's tough guy image wasn't just a product of his acting. It was deeply rooted in his upbringing and associations. Raised in rough neighborhoods, Raft had genuine friendships with individuals connected to the world of organized crime. In his youth, he worked for Oni Madden, a prominent figure in the Irish mob in the New York City. Moreover, Raft was personal friends with infamous mobsters such as Bugsy Siegel and Mayor Lansky. In an interesting turn of events, Raft found himself banned from entering the United Kingdom due to his criminal associations. While there's no evidence suggesting Raft was directly involved in illegal activities, his proximity to mobsters allowed him to bring authenticity to his on-screen portrayals of them. Remarkably, Raft also used his relationships with organized crime figures to assist his friends in times of trouble. It's rumored that he played a role in preventing planned assassinations of fellow actors James Cagney and Gary Cooper when they found themselves at odds with Mafia figures. In a way, George Raft's career was a unique blend of Hollywood glamour and real-life connections to the underworld. Number 8. Jerry Orbach Jerry Orbach is a name many may recognize from his roles in modern classics like Dirty Dancing and Law and & Order. However, his career in the entertainment industry stretches back to the 1950s, and his intriguing ties to the world of organized crime date back to 1971. It all began when Orbach accepted the role of Salvatore Kid Sally Palumbo in the 1971 comedy film The Gang That Couldn't Shoot Straight. This movie humorously depicted the escapades of inept mobsters, and was inspired by real-life exploits of Joe Gallo, a high-ranking member of the Profaci family in New York City. Gallo was far from thrilled to learn that a film mocking him and his gang had hit the screens, so he decided to meet with Orbach. What might have started as an anticipated confrontation took a surprising turn when Orbach and Gallo developed a friendly rapport. They became friends instead of adversary. However, this newfound friendship would soon lead Orbach into a situation that would forever link him to the criminal underworld. In April 1972, tragedy struck when Joe Gallo was murdered at Umberto's Clam House in Little Italy. It was a night that Orbach and his wife had spent with Gallo, even attending a Don Rickles show together. As Hollywood.com suggests, Orbach might have dined with Gallo at Umberto's, making him an eyewitness to the shocking murder. In the aftermath of the killing, Jerry Orbach chose to remain tight-lipped. He not only refused to cooperate with law enforcement, but also made a steadfast commitment never to discuss Joe Gallo. This silence was maintained until his passing in 2004, leaving many questions unanswered. The homicide detective responsible for the case, Joseph Coffey, was unequivocal about the impact of Orbach's refusal to provide information. 
The case could never be officially closed due to the actor's unwavering silence. Number 7. James Caan The late James Caan, a beloved and immensely successful actor of his era, didn't just portray mobsters on screen like Sonny Corleone in The Godfather. According to none other than Sammy the Bull Gravano, a prominent figure in the Mafia, Khan had real-life ties to organized crime. As reported by the Toronto Sun, Gravano asserted that Khan had deep connections with the Colombo crime family and held the official title of associate, a position typically reserved for non-Italians. Gravano even claimed that Khan sought Joe Colombo's personal permission to play the role of Sonny Corleone. The fact that Khan had some involvement with the Colombo crime family is beyond dispute. The New York Post revealed that Khan openly acknowledged his close relationship with Andrew Russo, a key figure in the Colombo family. Their families were so interconnected that Russo became the godfather to Khan's son, Scott. In his book, Hollywood and the Mob, author Tim Adler further highlighted how Khan leveraged his organized crime connections to intimidate adversaries. He went to great lengths, even deploying mob associates to pressure a producer, all in an attempt to secure a role in a film, The Pope of Greenwich Village. In a jaw-dropping twist, The Guardian reported that Khan allegedly once hired a mob-affiliated individual to eliminate fellow actor Joe Pesci over an $8,000 debt. Fortunately, this sinister plot never came to fruition. James Khan's portrayal of mafia figures in various films, including his iconic role as Sonny Corleone, undoubtedly added to his authenticity on screen. However, it also underscores the fact that his familiarity with real-life mobsters played a significant role in shaping his ability to embody these characters convincingly. Interestingly, Khan's deep friendship with Andrew Andy Mush Russo, the alleged acting street boss of the Colombo family, attracted attention when Russo faced legal trouble. As reported by Gothamist, Khan staunchly defended Russo during a major criminal sweep. Khan emphasized that his friendship with Russo spanned over three decades and described Russo as a steadfast friend to both him and his family. Khan even offered their pay for Russo's bail, highlighting the strong bond between them. In the end, while Russo did serve time behind bars, he was granted an early release in 2013 at the age of 78. A compassionate judge made this decision, assuring Russo's granddaughter that your puppy will be home soon. This outcome undoubtedly brought relief and joy to Russo's family and close friend, James Kahn. Number 6. Cary Grant Cary Grant, a timeless symbol of Hollywood elegance, is celebrated for his chiseled good looks and distinctive charm that transcends generations. While one might assume that a Hollywood icon like Grant would have no reason to associate with gangsters, the reality is quite the opposite. Surprisingly, organized crime may have played a role in Grant's rise to stardom. According to author Tim Adler's book, Hollywood and the Mob, Chicago crime boss Sam Giancana once claimed that Grant was among a list of old Hollywood stars who received assistance from the outfit, a colloquial term for organized crime. The mob had a knack for pressuring producers to cast actors of their choosing, with the expectation that these actors would owe them a favor in return. Grant's affiliation with famous mobster Bugsy Siegel is also noteworthy. How Stuff Works reveals that Grant was just one of many Hollywood celebrities who socialized with Siegel. However, Grant's introduction to the world of mobsters occurred through fellow actor George Raff, who had deep-rooted connections to the underworld due to his upbringing. Grant became a part of Siegel's inner circle and engaged in regular poker games with the gangster. Yet, when Siegel met his demise in 1947, Grant followed the lead of most of Siegel's Hollywood associates by choosing not to attend his funeral. Number 5. Frank Sinatra Few celebrities have been as publicly entwined with organized crime as Frank Sinatra. His connection to the mob has long been a captivating part of Sinatra's legend, with the Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI, officially documenting these relationships, as revealed by history. Over decades, the FBI meticulously tracked Sinatra's associations and movements, chronicling his close ties with prominent mobsters like Sam Giancana, the boss of the Chicago mob. Even the character of Johnny Fontaine in The Godfather, who beseeches Don Corleone for help in securing a film role, is unmistakably inspired by Sinatra, despite author Mario Puzo's contrary claims. Sinatra vehemently denied any mafia affiliations throughout his life. 
Page Six reports that he often attributed such allegations to racism, as people assumed his Italian surname implied mob connections. He contended that his interactions with mobsters was purely due to their ownership of the nightclubs where he performed, making it virtually impossible to avoid association. As Britannica suggests, modern perspectives tend to lean towards Sinatra's association with organized crime being somewhat involuntary. Mobsters actively sought association with the star, and he likely recognized the potential repercussions of rejecting such offers, ultimately choosing to play along. Sinatra's life as a Vegas crooner placed him perfectly to mingle with mobsters, a connection he embraced throughout his career. NPR notes allegations that Sinatra had acted as a bagman for the mob, but emphasizes that such claims were never definitively substantiated. Nevertheless, his proximity to notorious underworld figures was evident to anyone familiar with the scene. John Handsome Johnny Rosselli, a prominent Hollywood mafia associate in the 1950s and 60s, was known to be the virtual godfather of Las Vegas, according to Vice. He had connections with most of the era's major showbiz stars, including Sinatra, with whom he reportedly partied. However, Sinatra's mob connections extended well beyond Rosselli. History.com highlights his close friendship with Chicago mob boss Sam Giancana and his involvement with a rotating cast of underworld characters. The FBI's file on Sinatra reads like a veritable guide to organized crime figures of the time. Despite the extensive documentation, Sinatra consistently denied any mafia associations, leading investigators to scoff at his claims of ignorance regarding infamous mob names like Lucky Luciano, Meyer Lansky, or Bugsy Siegel. In the end, law enforcement struggled, or perhaps chose not to, pin any criminal activities on the iconic entertainer, ultimately giving him a pass. Number 4. Bing Crosby Bing Crosby the iconic voice behind timeless holiday tunes and a beloved public figure, concealed a different reality beneath his polished image. While he was celebrated as a clean-cut and amiable everyman with a golden singing voice, allegations of abusive behavior, heavy drinking, and an affinity for degenerative gambling created a stark contrast, as reported by Far Out magazine. Crosby's association with organized crime was far from glamorous. According to the New York Post, he was known to frequent illegal gambling establishments, frequently bringing him into close proximity with members of the criminal underworld. The Guardian further reveals that Crosby once found himself compelled to pay a hefty sum of $10,000 to a mobster in order to avert a potentially dire situation. One particularly harrowing incident, as recounted by the Desert Sun, occurred in 1929 when Crosby, in a state of inebriation, woke up in the company of gangsters. As fate would have it, he narrowly escaped a violent encounter when he retreated to the bathroom just moments before a rival gang arrived and riddled the room with bullets. Crosby's connections to the mob ran so deep that the FBI initiated an investigation into his activities. His passion for golfing led him to engage with some of America's most notorious and violent gangsters, including the infamous Bugsy Siegel. Crosby's gambling habits left him ensnared in debt to the mob, prompting him to turn to his friend Frank Sinatra for assistance in a desperate bid to secure his financial well-being. Number 3. Lana Turner Lana Turner, a luminous Hollywood icon, graced the silver screen for decades. While her professional life shone brightly, her personal life was often marked by turbulence. As reported by the Los Angeles Times, she ventured into matrimony seven times and was rumored to have had passionate entanglements with several of Hollywood's leading men. It was Lana Turner's involvement with Johnny Stampanato that would indelibly link her to the world of organized crime. Stampanato, known to have affiliations with mob boss Mickey Cohen, was a man characterized by his violent and unpredictable nature. When Turner decided to terminate the relationship due to his possessiveness and menacing outbursts, Stampanato resorted to threatening her with a razor. According to Tim Adler's book, Hollywood and the Mob, he cautioned Turner that she would face severe repercussions from the mob if any harm befell him. The explosive culmination of their tumultuous relationship occurred on April 4, 1958, as detailed by Time. Turner and Stampanato engaged in a heated, violent confrontation that ultimately resulted in Stampanato's fatal stabbing. Turner informed the authorities that her young daughter, Cheryl Crane, had rushed into the room and intervened to protect her, leading to the killing being deemed a justifiable homicide. 
However, lingering suspicions persisted, with some still questioning Turner's involvement in the death. One theory proposed by a friend of Stampanato suggested a complex love triangle between mother, daughter, and Stampanato, implying that Cheryl may have been romantically entangled with the older man. Number 2. Debbie Reynolds When you think of old-school Hollywood stars with ties to the Mafia, Debbie Reynolds might not be the first name that comes to mind. However, the beloved actress found herself entangled in some complex dealings with organized crime, whether she was fully aware of it or not. Reynolds' connection to the underworld can be traced back to her second husband, Harry Carl, a prominent figure in the Carl Shoes empire. Vanity Fair reveals that Harry Carl had a brief marriage to Joan Cohn, the widow of former Columbia Pictures mogul Harry Cohn. Remarkably, this marriage lasted only a few weeks leading law enforcement to speculate that it had been orchestrated by the mob to recover dubious investments that Cohn had facilitated for them through the studio. The plan was for Carl, as Joan's husband, to gain control of Cohn's estate, allowing him to discreetly repay all involved parties without leaving behind an obvious paper trail. In 1960, the same year that Harry Carl married Debbie Reynolds, Carl Shoes transferred ownership of her residence to Sidney Korshak, a renowned an influential attorney within the realm of organized crime. Shortly thereafter, Korshak played a pivotal role in securing a substantial payout for Reynolds when she made her debut as a performer in Las Vegas. The Mob Museum highlights that a few years later, Reynolds and her production company entered into a business arrangement to produce Scopatone films, early precursors to music videos that were played in jukebox-like devices. However, it was eventually revealed that the entire Scopatone business served as a front for organized crime, leading to an FBI investigation and its eventual demise in 1969. While it appears that Reynolds may not have been fully cognizant of these connections, the sequence of events raises intriguing questions about her associations with the underworld. Number 1. Marilyn Monroe when we think of Marilyn Monroe, we envision the quintessential sex symbol and the tragic beauty whose life was consumed by fame and the unforgiving pressures of Hollywood. Yet, there are intriguing claims that suggest Monroe may have had deep-seated connections to organized crime and that her death might not have been the result of mere tragedy, but potentially an orchestrated act by the mob. One of the key figures in bringing forth these claims is actor Gianni Russo, renowned for his role as Carlo in The Godfather. Russo, who had his own connections to organized crime as a messenger for legendary mobster Frank Costello in his youth, asserted that Monroe had been murdered by individuals linked to the world of organized crime. According to Fox Business, Russo's theory revolves around the notion that Monroe was employed by the mob as a means to get close to President John F. Kennedy and his brother, Robert Kennedy. He further contends that Monroe had plans to reveal what she knew about her affairs with the Kennedys, a move that could have catastrophic consequences for the powerful political family. Vanity Fair provides additional context by highlighting the suspicion that Monroe's apartment might have been subjected to wiretapping, potentially capturing recordings of her meetings with the Kennedys. Furthermore, Monroe is believed to have visited Chicago mob boss Sam Giancana just days before her untimely demise in 1962. Reportedly, Giancana attempted to dissuade Monroe from divulging details of her romantic involvements with the Kennedys to protect his leverage over the president. While the full truth remains shrouded in mystery, it is evident that Monroe had some form of connection to the world of organized crime, further adding to her mysterious story. That's it, the shocking stories of old Hollywood's secret mafia connections. If you like these stories, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video, and subscribe to our channel for more unforgettable stories from the golden age of Hollywood. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.